On this episode of DC On Screen, we are going back to review Justice Society World War II. But not just that. No, no, we're also reviewing DC Showcase Adam Strange and DC Showcase Kamandi, or Kamandi, the last boy on Earth, right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome into DC On Screen, the podcast bringing you news and reviews for the DC multiverse on film and television since 2015. I am your host, David C. Robertson, and this, the morally questionable side hustle to my full-time Honest Day's work, Jason Goss. Hi. It's mostly because I don't wear pants. (laughs) Everyone, no matter what you do, it could be the most honest uh, side hustle and if you're not wearing pants everyone assumes you're up to no good yeah yeah I could spend my days doing charity that's right and they're like what is that pervert doing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. ladling soup out to the homeless yep Without he has no pants. pants yep he has no pants every time I, it feels discriminatory <clears throat> in a way yeah I'm really just trying to help the only and time be supportive it... of you know you and our partnership against <laughs> Uh, you know, no, I don't. Hardships in general. Oh, you know, I think the uh, the only time the doing stuff without pants, doing holy work without pants, and actually, indeed, being a pervert, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the only time that really works is if you're a priest. Yes, of course. Just saying, like, oh my God, he's up there with those children, you know, and he's got no pants. Yeah. They're like, oh, he's a righteous man. Ah, oh, Father O'Halloran, he would never stick his swinky in a pinky. I mean, if you're the one sitting in the pew, you're like, well, surely someone approved this. Yeah. Like, some sort of <laughs> higher up, existential which, or not. Which is ironically, so okay. also the noise you make when you smell. Yeah, that's a problem. What's going on? You pew! I mean, you know, some practical considerations. Like, if I was a mortician, for instance, who cares? Uh-huh. I mean, you have to do anything with, uh, you know, what you're working with, I suppose. But like, you know, no one in the room actually cares if you're panted. Right. Although I still don't know if that's a Hollywood ideal. If it like there's always one dude in a room at what looks like two thirty five in the morning. Right. It is never daytime hours. Never. Unless you're on like one of them CIS shows, you know. Yeah. And why does that guy always have a light on him? I don't know. I think that would hinder the experience, I would suppose. I love the trope, though, in Hollywood of every time there's a person who's, you know, supposed to be examining a body, they're always a total creep. Yeah. The only time I didn't, I don't remember that was like Bones, you know, uh, the show. Where they treat it with some respect, at least, as far as yeah. the process. And uh, they did a similar thing in the in the heat of the night. Mm. It was just an old country, you know, mortician. He just... Let me tell you something, Bill. That mm. boy was poisoned. You know. <laughs> or killed by the motorcycle that just drove by. That's right. <laughs> I can tell you that from here. No, no, I no. I heard him the... coming down the street before you brought this boy in. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you see the track marks on his legs. Yep, yep, yep. It's where the handlebar hit him on the head. <laughs> I mean, I've said it before. Frankly, I don't know why it ain't two bodies. It's pretty messed up in here. I've said it before, I'm sure, on the show, uh, there's this great scene on In the Heat of the Night where you know, they're, the cops are all hanging out and, you know, figuring out this crime scene. And uh, the big strapping dude, Bubba, gets mm-hmm. underneath the car and starts looking around. And he shows up at the right at the cliffhanger to go to commercial. He goes, Chief, I don't know about you, but to me, this looks like a piece of head. <laughs> And he holds up like a chunk of of dude's skull he found underneath in like the wheel well, you know, of this car. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's a beautiful sentence to 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 read, to write, to hear about. <laughs> yeah, and it was made <laughs> this even looks better. Like a piece of head. <laughs> it's made even better because of the musical conceits of the show. Mm. Because he holds up the chunk of meat and goes, Chief, I don't know about you, but to me, this looks like a piece of head. And then suddenly scatting. 
Oh, God. Oh. I didn't know which version of 80s bullshit you were about to tell me happened. Okay. I love oh, it, though. I love it, though. That is a fantastic show. I don't doubt you. It is a really good show with really solid continuity, uh, really good storytelling, great character arcs. Uh, and yeah, but, uh, you know, maybe it helps that I've actually been to the town where they filmed it mm. and they haven't changed really anything. Yeah. All of the appropriate landmarks are there. The same colors, the same style, like very much on purpose. They know what they got. Uh, but man, I doubt they're selling the same tours they are for the walking dead <laughs> villages. No, no, but you. Hey, but you know what's funny? It's funny you say that because one other big show um, filmed there, and it was the Vampire Diaries. Mm-hmm. So, like, when you go to like the Civic Center, like the Visitor Center, there's like a big room for In the Heat of the Night, and like a big ass room for Vampire Diaries. Nice. And then they also had a few movies, but like the tourists go there the, for In the Heat of the, the Night, and Vampire Diaries. The fake check framed for how much they got for those. <clears throat> Next to all the pictures, because you know, let's be realistic. If I if I go to the Chamber of Commerce, I'm just I'm not uh-huh. so interested in headshots. <laughs> it's like, what did that get us exactly? Yeah, twenty five thousand yeah. dollars. Oh my God, you're fired. <laughs> you you're, know, you're so incredibly fired. I mean, Vampire Diaries went for a had while. Another digit. Yeah. So the so did that other show. Anyway, <laughs> steer it back. Yeah. yeah, eight minutes. Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, let, you want to talk about what Justice steer, Society? It, it, steer it back was not the right verbiage. Steer it in any direction. We had not even steered in. There was it. no steering whatsoever. Yeah, we got so, in the boat off the side of the deck, un unhinged the ropes, took them uh-huh. off, put them in the boat, and have been talking for eight minutes and have no idea where we are. We may have hit shore. We may be going out further. I don't know. I can't see I, pier anymore. I know exactly where we are. And I forget if we left the oars on the deck or on the pier. <laughs> no, sure. we left these three features that we were supposed to be talking about. We haven't even talked about them at all. Three oars. Dear God. All right. Go forward, sir. Justice Society, World War II. Mm-hmm. Uh, what were your thoughts? Uh, so I'm we're here still to at discuss. this point. I'm still at this point right now <clears> with uh, <throat> this, mm-hmm. this version of the films, the Tomorrow verse, where... I'm enjoying watching them, but I, I like I'm I'm still a little I'm I'm still a little meh. Not because I don't like the take. Not it's not like a problem with choices. I'm just not feeling super invested yet. Yeah, parts I mean, I'm I definitely liking. parts I'm liking. I'm definitely having problems with choices, um, but I think I'm I'm very similarly in the same boat. Like I had I got close this movie. There were a couple of little things, little like. First of all, like, it's great to see the Justice Society. Um, Wonder Woman's hair was awful. The The drawing of her hair, is, some scenes is fine. It looks fine. And yeah, then... I've, I've got it playing in the background, because I kind of do that sometimes. And, like, I can kind of see what you're talking about. There are certain full-on shots, especially with her tiara, where she looks like the end of a pencil that has had the, the eraser rubbed smooth. A little bit. It's just like a triangle at the top. Yeah. It's like Anson Mount's hair in Strange New Worlds. It's yeah. Yeah. What, a little bit. I, mm-hmm. uh, that aside. Or like the most exaggerated versions of Tenet sometimes. Yeah. Here's a they weird. Did go, bl- they did go cray on his hair at some point. Yeah. It was um, glorious though. Let's be real. A weird thing about the Flash mm-hmm. design wise, that little... The little chin point thing they've got, the thing that covers his chin. <laughs> it just makes him when he's the flash, he just looks like a dude, bro. He looks like a little like one of those little goatees. Like when he's in costume or out of costume. Yeah. When he's in costume. You talking about the little the you know, the the like straight up forty five degree a little chin guard. I don't know, I like it. I like it. I think yeah, I like I the mean, chin guard like, in here. It's like a thing that Jim Lee started doing and everyone kinda <sighs> we're like, Yay. Nah, nah, never cared for it. But I think I'm aboard. I like parts of the design with that and then like the mm-hmm. way it goes up the cheek and back at the same kind of 45 has to me like a little bit of a, uh, not Orion, uh, the dude in the chair, I'm blanking. A little bit of a his vibe though. Metron? Yeah, there you go. Um, a little bit of his vibe though, like those weird little 
sharp 45s in, in a way. That could also just be this animation stuff. I just have to yeah. be watching them right now. Could be. Uh, yeah, those aren't big things. Uh, when I think of big things, I immediately go to, why did Barry Allen get summoned there by Dr. Fate? I mean, yeah, Fate said, yeah, he's a mission to accomplish and a lesson he must learn. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not a reason. Like, within the confines of this movie, I feel like part of the reason I'm watching the movie is to find out why the inciting incident happened in the first place. Like, <laughs> Well, that's fine. <laughs> to some extent, if you get the reason for the inciting incident, um, I'm not sure it's that clear. I mean, I suppose it's like in some ways as good as any other movie and any other average movie. But like you know, in that sense, that's the bomb drop for me is it's a very average movie. But I, I guess it's a good enough reason to continue watching the story. But it's also why like I'm not incredibly invested yet in this series. Yeah, I, I haven't figured out who I'm supposed to be. I don't know. Caring about? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, <coughs> definitely like some scenes that I really love. And the, yeah. there's real care going into this. Like, there's a ton of things that I think I'm going to really like. There's always like the, you know, the basics of just problems with these kind of movies that are going to be a baseline. Yeah. I kind of feel like, hey, look. So as far as caring about them, they had some really just, cool stuff in this I movie. I have completely gotten my foot in, I guess, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they've got they've done some cool things in this movie. Um like I loved that they I mean spoilers, I'm going to spoil the shit out of this. Uh I loved We're very the, late to that party. <laughs> I know. But look, there are people like us who haven't watched it yet. Presumably you're going to title it something along the lines no. of this movie. Surely they'll be right. I loved that Hawkman died. Oh, actual consequences here? Yeah. I loved the stakes. I loved that Steve Trevor died. I mean, he is Hawkman, so he's just kind of dying for now yeah in certain ways um i loved black canaries sobbing over him her clear love for him i wish it had been really in the rest of the movie so that i knew that was a thing oh no um fair enough but i didn't in, catch that uh my the, the best part of this movie the final act uh is solid <clears throat> as hell. Mm-hmm. that final battle that uh, is is great so like black canary in particular like her uh, s- sobbing, pulling the mask yeah. off the whole thing. You think that's a scream or whatever the hell she said? Oh, yeah. And that was right before that gruesome ass cry where she like rips the yeah. flesh off of that yeah. thing. Like flaying him compared to what she did would have been kind. Yeah. It, it was it was bad. So <laughs> she descaled the motherfucker. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, yeah, no, that was that was solid. I mean, like tons of scenes here that I really liked. Uh, that... It, a lot of the emotional beats, actually, uh, now, now we're talking about it, are actually uh, very solidly good. Yeah. I just wish that, because, like, up to that point, like, I hadn't really gotten an idea that, like, Black Canary was into Hawkman. I just thought, make, you know, hey, well, you know, this is someone I care about. We're friends, teammates, whatever. They, I didn't really get a strong sense. Like, I knew that he was, like, waiting on, on Shaira, but... I don't know. I just, I didn't think of it as that serious until he was dying. And I was like, oh, she liked him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. I, they were, they were paired a lot. It wasn't exactly that. I think, I mean, it, it wasn't exactly that I like misinterpreted it as platonic. Yeah. But I guess you're saying it wasn't that deep from what was portrayed. I, I get that. Well, yeah, it didn't. I just didn't get the sense up until him dying that it was you know, I thought maybe it was like a mild flirtation. Could be. That being said, you know, uh, it's not like it wouldn't fit Canary's like character traditionally to just be very hot headed about like, no, I was really into that guy. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? And just kill a dude. Yeah. Because like occasionally, uh, my history of her, her that I know of is like occasionally you piss that bitch off, she will fuck you up. Yeah, that's how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess technically this would be her mother or something. Uh, yeah, you know, still. Uh, the, yeah, in the, I feel like in the last act they suddenly decided uh, that they were going to be like hard PG thirteen because it's like all of a sudden everybody starts dying. Canary's cry is ripping the skin off a sea creature. You know, the flash threw bombs down the one of the like, giant sea grabs guts. You know, and it started b- vomiting black blood. I'm like. <laughs> 
Fuck yeah! Like that's awesome. All right, we're doing where was action. this? Where was this movie? <laughs> like for uh, the last the, seventy minutes. Yeah, I get that. There, um, it was a little bit slow to world build. Actually, that may be my general complaint right now with with the whole thing. Slow to world build for me. Uh, but like, I'm not, I'm not out of faith for it. But one like minor gripe along the lines of the violence in the last act is like, dude, that trident through Steve Trevor. There's no last speech. Like, fuck <laughs> you. He's dead in four seconds. Probably, yeah. That went through two lungs and his spine. Oh, you know what was stupid? <laughs> and maybe it's not, and I just missed something, and you can tell me. Like, at first, it's like it tricked me, you know? Because I, di- I, I didn't exactly connect the Wonder Woman not... Uh, accepting Steve's proposal every day with what mm-hmm. Barry was doing with Iris at the beginning. I had forgotten that the Barry and Iris thing had happened, mm-hmm. but like it almost tricked me because she hands Barry that ring that Steve gave to her. And she's like, don't, don't wait, you know, blah, 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 whatever it was. Yeah. I, uh, I was like, Oh, that's neat. And then like two seconds later, I was like, when the hell did Wonder Woman find out about Iris? <laughs> Did he mention that? I don't think he mentioned that. No, no, I think it was just. The, I was like, no, that's just bad writing. I think it was just the phrasing on that one. Yeah, that's just real bad. Why would she give him that ring? Steve just gave her that ring and died. I did feel very bad for Steve, though. Uh, yeah, like in his dying moments there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just couldn't quite get it on her ring. Just uh, inches away. Uh, and I was like, ah, oh, on her on. finger. You mean? Yeah. But sorry, on her finger. Uh, couldn't get his ring on her ring. Right. It's hard. You have to throw it like a carnival act. Yeah. He couldn't quite get it there. And I don't know. It, I know it's more tragic that way in a way, but I was, oh. Mm-hmm. Of course. Of course. I did love his line earlier. I feel like it's a line that's probably in the comic somewhere that they ripped. Um, uh, Like where I think it's uh, Our Man's asking, like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, Whatever I can. Uh-huh. Ah, it's a cool line. I feel like that's so probably a Steve Trevor classic somewhere that I don't know about. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so I got I got uh, another thought here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like everybody got a pretty good storyline. Mm-hmm. Except? Except, man, it would have been cool if Barry and Jay had had something to say to each other, really. Like, <laughs> they barely got any time together. I'm like, okay, Barry... This some bitch just t- says something about a speed force and you don't know about it. No, no. Ah. I, I think no, I think you did get the scene that you're hoping he, for there. Yes, eventually, but like yeah, eventually there was a scene where he was like, okay, so what's the movie? Force? It's like we I've been experiencing the same thing and they do a little uh, breakdown. But it was so little. I mean, maybe, but out of that movie, it's probably about yeah. as big a scene as you can count on. Uh yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. All right, got a question for you. I like it would have been nice to have some version of like the cover of the like the first Crisis event or something, or, like that first uh, break off. Yeah, that, that would have been a cool way to like bring the worlds together and have him go back in time is to have Jade show up. Yeah, like they could have almost like adapted the first part of that story. Yeah, um, who knows? I, I don't know enough about this universe yet. I don't know what they're going to try to tie in a little bit. Am I the only one? Mm-hmm. Who thought that Shakespeare was Batman? <laughs> I kept calling him Matches in my head. Yeah, he looked like Matches Malone. Actually, one of Batman's for, alter egos. For no reason whatsoever, other than it matched some like uh, old stereotype of like black and white I Love Lucy area stuff. I, I was mm-hmm. thinking of him as like Caesar Matches. Because <laughs> that little thin V shaped mustache. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought, I totally thought it was going to be Bruce. And then, uh, you know, he gets shot and it turns out like, oh, it's, he's, he's Clark Kent. He's a reporter. And he went to a, uh, an orphanage, which was great because that's totally like a thing from back in the day. It's totally like, I always remember it in the Fleischer cartoons where it'd be like, you know, saying that, uh, he was raised in an orphanage mm-hmm. instead of talking about the kids. So I'm like, ah, I, and by the way, I when he becomes Superman, in this movie, I loved that he was jumping and not flying. Yeah, it 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 is so extraordinarily flasher that 
particular. It was. Bit. And even like all the scenes with him running around like, like destroying scene. those planes. He's that just shit doing it looks so flysher. Yeah. He's doing superhuman stuff, not actually like Superman alien stuff. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's doing exactly the speech. You know the I'll, speech. You know yeah. the one that Matt Balmer says later. Loved it, loved it, loved the golden age of it all. Uh, even Aquaman's yellow gloves. I was like, yeah, that's the golden age. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. do, I yeah, do the think. the reeks of it, the whole thing, the whole thing. You know, this thing was only 84 minutes. And yet I'm like, I would have, if, if y'all would have brought Batman in for just a minute, I could have dealt with 90. Just give me six minutes of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I love Golden Age Batman with the giant Wolverine ears, with the purple gloves. I just want one of you motherfuckers to give him a gun. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, with the side holster. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you know, just like have him swing in, crack a neck, and go fitting in for his kind. <laughs> 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 Quiet or Papa Spank. And wait, what was that one? Snap his neck over a car window or something? I forget. Yeah, no, it was. He was just hanging out of a window out of a building, and Batman just like <laughs> heel right to the neck, crack. Yeah. It reminds me of like it, there is a there is a John Wick scene where he just pops a dude's neck over like the kitchen island. Uh huh. Just just straight down. Just just like oh man, you didn't have a shot at that one. Hmm. Average dude would have had you on that one. Just just drop your hand. You got it. It's just so brutal. Yeah, I do like the brutality of this of this movie. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. My favorite moment, though, is that dude trying to get out of the tank and then the thing falling on him going, oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. So, I have to ask, uh, did you know who the blonde guy with the long hair was? in the prison who gave Clark Kent the package, Shakespeare, the package. Did you connect that? Did you know who it was? I, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm real trapped on this because I think, I think I have a flashing memory of maybe that occurring to me, but absolutely not. No. Yeah. No real possibility that I would claim that I actually caught that. Yeah, but I think the only thing that I possibly thought was weird in that scene that maybe, maybe I'm thinking I maybe flashed is that damn cut off shirt thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that, I, even that is probably just uh, confabulation. Yeah, I totally like. I was doing prep for the show and for for this episode that you're currently listening to, mm -hmm. and I was like, wait, who was the guy with the blonde hair in the prison? Like, I had forgot about him, and then it just, like, clicked in my head, and I was like, oh, that was a thing. And I went back and watched no, the scene, and I was... plot point. Hold on, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And I was like... And it was it was kind of, like, snuck in there, because they were also doing, like, Dr. Fate in the other room. <laughs> so they were going back and forth between this blonde-haired guy and Dr. Fate, and both of them were saying, like, weird freaking shit. Yep. They're like both of them talking about like things in the future, both of them like hinting at shit. Uh, so I, yeah, I had to go back and I was like, okay, I don't know who the blonde guy is. He's saying, oh, they told me to give this to you. They said you would come. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. Uh, who, 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 who would this? I don't know who this is. I even backed it up to see if they had a name on the door. To say, is, is there anything? No. And that was a huge flaw for me, for this movie. Like, it was so thrown in there and mashed up with Dr. Fate. I forgot it even happened for a while. <laughs> and then, like, I went back. Now, like, who would you have thought it was based on what was going on? Honestly. My first guess was Psycho Pirate. I mean, no. And the reason I say that is because I did look up at some point. The like the actual villain is the advisor. I did look that mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. and that is a psycho pirate derivative. So that wasn't on my mind. Yeah, I don't know who I might have thought that was, and I don't think that I actually caught the the S to to really think about it too hard right then. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I don't know. I guess I just didn't realize like what role it had in the movie, and I didn't focus too hard on that dude. Yeah, he doesn't look like when you. Uh, I just watched. He doesn't it. Like, when look you like look at him. Just by himself, he's like 
The hair's not quite right. I guess looking at it, yeah, it's a white shirt. There's always the ripped and torn white shirt. There's always the the blonde hair, but it's 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 always so much longer mm-hmm. that I don't think about it. And then you know, short of that, he just kind of looks like every Anglo designed, yeah, fit white dude that's ever been drawn. <laughs> I also thought it might be future Barry, <laughs> possibly, yeah. <laughs> like they don't even give him like the gripping, you know kind of wide frame they do normally for Commandi where he, he yeah. clearly has like like you, you I forget what's that like the three the three pull Olympic thing where you, Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it looks like he could do that. Yeah. Uh yeah. So uh I yeah, I had no idea it was Commandi until I realized that the showcase was Commandi the boy the last boy on earth. So I was like, oh, I bet that sets it up. And I looked it up and they were like, yeah, it was like, they, I saw like, you know, them handing him the, the Superman thing in the short. And I'm like, hey, sons of bitches. Mm-hmm. And by the way, those short, the, the, the yeah, Commandi isn't available on HBO Max. So it's a whole stress and a struggle to get a hold of. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, Back to the pirating days. <laughs> so... Uh, I don't know that how much more I have on this movie. I've, uh, this I thought this was interesting. The film was officially announced August 2020 during the Man of Tomorrow panel at Fandome. Some of the concepts for the story and setting, though, originated from a Wonder Woman animated series developed by producer Butch Luckick, who would later incorporate them into the film. So, so, so some some of this was from an, a Wonder Woman animated series. I'm glad we didn't get that series if that's the way she was going to look with that high ass hair. I mean, yeah, I'll give you the character design problem, but her hair, her head looks like a butt plug. It it yeah, it it kind of really does. But <laughs> it, but I liked her portrayal. Like I liked the yeah. the script as far as that goes. And I don't know, I could have done with this. I could have done with this, except I mean, I yeah, I I I, w- I would have preferred not the look. Yeah, I mean, I could have done with it, but you know, whatever. So yeah, I I I liked this movie. Okay, I didn't love it. It wasn't you know the best thing ever. Um, I just I feel like they they needed to hint at some things. Maybe make it a bit longer, which I'm I which is I'm I feel crazy for saying because even with the 84 minute runtime, I was still going like, Oh God, how much longer do I have? 26 minutes. <laughs> God, Dear Lord. Um, <laughs> I mean, I get it. I, on the one hand, I, I feel like, yeah, I could do with a little bit less, but like, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to just be the guy who's encouraging them to like do an entire crossover series and start the first moment the film opens. It's not that. Yeah. I, I really liked a lot of moments in these so far. I'm not looking for it to be this giant thing. Yeah. But there there have been some moments that are a bit draggy, I guess. And some kind of moments where I didn't really know where we'd, we were going with some of them. Yeah. But, you know, with movies like this, you kind of... I feel like I am bored initially because I have been trained to believe eh, everything's gonna work out it's gonna be all right nothing's gonna there are no stakes in the story it doesn't matter it's just a cartoon to watch sure but then when they start actually killing people i'm like okay oh my you have my let's let's see what's happening you came to play yeah and like i said like the last like 10 15 minutes of that movie were a lot of fun fantastic they were were. i skipped ahead they're playing right now they were a lot of fun yeah yeah and it is nice to see uh, yeah, our man in in action, and and this it version is. of Black Canary, and it is he's a fan favorite of mine. Yeah, I know. Fun stuff, huh? I cracks me up too. Like half the JSA characters to me are like, oh man, I wish I knew so much more about them. They're such a fun concept, and then like half of them kind of bore me. And I'm I'm glad we moved on to Justice League. Mm-hmm. De- it depends. Depends which particular version of that table. You sent me yeah. a shot of, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, what was I going to say to you? I was going to say something. I don't know. It was either going to be a point about the movie or uh, this has been fun. We'll call it a day out. Oh. <laughs> Probably one no, of the two. Uh, I've got a couple of things here. 
Um, I am tired of Nazis. Oh, typically. Uh, yeah, that's that's my response as well. And I think it's just I was, you know, born a little later. So, like, the pe- the generation b- before me were really obsessed with World War II, or, like, a couple of generations before me anyway, were really obsessed with World War II. It was in a bunch of TV shows and was until, well, Vietnam happened. And then everyone was able to comment on that and complain about world, uh, Vietnam. And that was the one I really cared about. I don't give a shit about World War II most of the time. Yeah, no. As no, far as it, taking interest in it, like atrocities were had and things were important, but I'm not, I'm not trying to take away sacrifices made or heroics done. It's just, I'm tired of it. I'm Indiana Jones and Marvel <laughs> and Hydra and I'm tired of Nazis. It's a very so like black and white piece of history in my, in my head where that's not the most relevant part of what came out of that anymore in our lifetime. And I also think of John Belushi. Yes. <laughs> Because of 1941. But <laughs> yeah, I'm just tired of World War II I stuff. I mean, generally, like in our is. lifetime, it, even Vietnam was fought basically over communism and some bullshit. Like, it, yeah. it, it's it's always just been the communism thing. And World War II was, uh, you know, that was our grandparents when we grew up. And we're in our uh, late 60s at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, not relevant to us. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry. Did you just say we're in our late sixties? <laughs> I was just making sure. Let's see. Where did that 20 years go? Just meant spiritually, but 30 years, um, spiritually, cardiovascularly, <laughs> spot as uh, spinally, spinally. Uh, yeah. Backily. I almost said prostatally. Who knows? That shit just uh, catches up with you. Yeah. You, you just don't know. You just don't know. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there was something we started to talk about on the phone earlier today. And I was like, nope, nope, save it for the cast. What was that? Oh, I don't remember at all. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Uh, something about, uh, oh, shit, I don't remember now. Damn it. I'm sorry. It was, uh, yeah, sorry. I should have read it. I should have read it, dude. Should have as well. It, that, it was a, um. Oh, I remember what it was. You were way more interested in the beginning when the when <laughs> when the president is like talking about oh, I know. Yeah, uh, okay. Hitler so, stealing magical artifacts and shit, that that was my <laughs> point. Was I would borderline rather see like a descendant of this film, where cool, send like red suit Barry back, leave us Justice League or Justice Society, you know, era in this version. But that cracks me up every time I see this. Like it'll be. You know, so-and-so wants to find the Spear of Destiny. And, yeah, like, the Nazis wanted to find that. That was That's historically accurate. Like, Hitler spent actual time and money on trying to find the Spear of Destiny, which, if, if anyone doesn't know, the folklore for that is that it was the actual spear that, you know, pierced Christ's side, and it was preserved somehow. Like, that would actually still be fucking preservable at this point. Yeah. But uh, 2,100 years later. But the the point being, like, that's supposed to be if you hold the spear, you control destiny. And like my point is, if we're talking about like real power here, if someone actually got their hands on that thing, that's it. That's it. That's it. Like it's over. If Hitler found that, it would have been done. It was like you're, there's no extra act. It, like there's no salvation. There's no Avengers. There's no <laughs> Justice League. That, could, that is literally, you have the, the power of God, the creator of the entire world, universe, and everything that could possibly be in one po- in, one, in one little thing. Like, how would you defeat that? Well, what would be fun for me is if we learn that, like, oh, that's that version of God. And th- these other dudes found the Egyptian version. Mm. And, like, for me, that would be a fun World War Three. is, like, secretly, all of these uh, little... Tiny little World War Two, no, a good World War Three. All these little World War Two little subjugates have been plowing away the whole time, and one of them actually found the Spear of Destiny, and uh, like America actually ran over and like found that thing in Egypt because uh, we, we did focus a lot on North Africa at the time, and like they get in there and they find all these little artifacts of some some old gods, and that would be a, a like a fun story for me. We'll find the Spear of Destiny for like six versions of religion. <laughs> 
Yeah. I see. And do I like just a want... celebrity death match kind of thing. <laughs> I just really want the Seinfeld version of that story. Mm-hmm. Where it's like just Hitler like finding the spear of destiny and like holding it, trying to wield it, and just nothing happens. And he's like, I don't understand. It's a spear of destiny. And like some other Germans sitting there going, What did you think was going to happen? I don't know. I was going to control destiny and I was going to do all this bloody dude. And it's a stick. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a sharp, pointy stick. That's all it is. It's all it ever was. There's a super nerdy joke that's available about, like, if I hold this spear, I can do everything that God would do with humanity if I just wish it. And then you do and nothing happens. Uh-huh. And it's like yep. the, the person next to you that knows better says, well, the explanation is that, like, turns out deism was right. It's pretty yeah. much a hands-off-the-clock kind of situation. Right. Uh, shh, shh. Do you need a spatula? <laughs> but yeah, no, like my version would go. You could like, sharpen that probably. Get some chives out of it. Yeah, my version would go and be like, why, why, why would it? Like, so was the spear? You have to have the question. Like, so was the spear, uh, the spear of destiny before it stabbed Christ, or did stabbing Christ make it the spear of destiny? Like, well, you know, was it super powered in the first place? Was it a magical thing in the first place? If it was or it wasn't. Why would sticking it make him make it magical? Like, why would God allow his <laughs> one random Roman soldier <laughs> yeah, to have that a... power for a second? <laughs> or like, why would a Roman soldier sticking? Like, surely his head exploded, and they just didn't document that part. Um, why would a Roman a random Roman soldier sticking Christ with a spear of destiny? Uh, why would it even give the spear that power? Mm-hmm. Like we just I don't know. It is it's unclear. It yeah. Why would God be like, Well, we stabbed my son with that spear, I guess I'll have to give you the power of my will. It it really like the hilarious part to me, I, there's probably something in this folklore that I am completely lost on. Cause like, how does it go from just some dude who stabbed a guy? Like mm-hmm. doing an honest day's work, I suppose. Like, something like that. He for him, he he's just like this is Thursday, you know, and yeah, the old corpse poker. Yeah, you're just like you're not done fast enough, Rawr! and like <laughs> just pop a guy. And yeah. Like, I guess you go home, you maybe clean the blade a little bit. I don't know what your life's like right then. You go to your hut. Like, there's no like backstory that I know of where someone grabbed that and like stole it in the middle of the night. They're like, oh, it's it's definitely still got some of the blood on it. We'll just go. Yeah. It's probably yeah, supposedly Thomas. the Roman soldiers it's probably buried Thomas. it. You know it was Thomas. I doubt it. <laughs> Just had to be. I seriously doubt it. <laughs> He's not dead. I, I feel say. like he would have been appreciative of that joke. <laughs> Either that or he'd be like, "Oh my god, I can never live it down." No, he, yeah. Sorry, buddy. And then I'll make. Yeah. I'm. I'm gonna put my. I'm gonna do the finger. The finger fucking emotion or a little thing motion. Yeah. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah, of course. Uh, I would like to take a break. I think this would be a good time for it. Let's uh, let's skedaddle for just a second. Be right back. All right, we are back. And uh, let me say real quick before continuing on with our discussion. Thank you so much to the patrons. I think it's free to join if you want to. See posts and shit. Talk to us, talk to other people, uh, join the community of which there is very little activity. So it won't bother you too much. Yeah. Uh, a dollar a month gets you that plus every, uh, episode of DC on screen ad free. And for $5 a month, you'll get whatever other bullshit we happen to, uh, decide to put out on the Patreon. Sometimes it's slow. Sometimes it's a little less than slow. (laughs) It never really amps up. But uh, we'd love to have you there. It really is the best way to support the show. And it helps us make this thing. And And then whatever else we can get made because of that. Yep. Because it gives us that space. (laughs) Yep. Just a little wiggle room. Just a little wiggle room. I don't like how we phrase that. And you like us, don't you? 
This ain't some OnlyFans shit. Stop it with that phrasing. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, you done talking about um, Justice Society? Yep. (laughs) By the way, Shakespeare didn't look anything, anything like Barry's Superman. He should have been like, you're so familiar. Superman? Like, no, no, (laughs) no. That's why I thought he was Batman. He didn't look anything like Superman. He had the weird high cheekbones and whatnot. I know. I told you. I kept thinking matches. He looked different. I'm telling you. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, well, first of all, I we, let's just go ahead and talk about Kamandi. Was there anything you cared about in this story? Because I didn't. Like I thought it was kind of cool. Um, I thought we were going to see him wind up going back in time. But they, we all we saw was like them giving him... The the Superman outfit from the future, yeah, and he like wanders off with it, and like like he old elder monkey, away. old elder monkey is like I dared not tell him that he was also in the prophecy. Like, oh I know, man, I know, I know. Why wouldn't you tell him he was in the in the thing? And and I get it. I would almost well. Let me put it this way: that is the most I've ever cared about, Commandi. I will agree with you. This Even, showcase is the most I've ever cared. It, I, I, I was actually yeah. pretty riveted by this story in a way. Yeah, it did pretty well. Like it was the most I've ever been interested in commodity, for sure. Um, and I, that's shocking because I love Batman: The Brave and the Bold, and I love uh, that was a good throwback. Yeah, and I've read I some of those stories shorts. that were pretty good. Uh, like I usually just see them referenced in things. Or like there's a sidebar where somebody will, you know, go to a certain period of time or whatever. But this was very focused and man, it was fun. I loved, loved watching the idea that that's the backstory there, the like the or that that's the backstory there in general. But like mm-hmm. that that was cool. I loved watching the little trials. It it was just it was a very familiar pattern for the story, but Yeah. Really well done. Some something occurred to me uh, while watching this, and I think one of the reasons I liked this more than most other commandy things that I've seen um, is because they treated the animal characters like they were people. Mm-hmm. They didn't get like horrendously caught up on like having like the snake people being like. <sighs> <laughs> you know, like they weren't like adding hisses. Yeah, they were just and truly shit to the anthropomorphized speech. tribes, and yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, like the tiger wasn't like talking about his barbed cock, and he wasn't like you know it, roaring. I mean, he, yeah, at but stuff. like like when his There's... foot was hurt and he tried to walk, he he growled. Like I was sitting there, he did. They were the man. He did. There were there's a couple little bits, but it wasn't just so overpowering, like. Is like for for sure. Like when I was sitting there and I saw those monkeys, like the apes walk up. I went, ah, shit. They're gonna start. <laughs> was, they're gonna start grabbing their own armpits and just a yeah. Second. Like I, I was like, they're gonna be like a step away from doing like Louie on friggin' Jungle Book. Yeah. I'm like, oh god, now we're gonna have just like we're gonna now. have like. Some kind of freaking banana cult or something. Like, I don't know. I can't do it. But it was good. (laughs) But yeah, for just a second there, I was like a little kid, you know, like a little five-year-old kid with his mom at Kmart. I was like rolling around underneath the the little clothes rack there going, I don't want to do this anymore. Jesus Christ. I just hidden them but yeah i did that too yeah. i like to scare people oh it's the best yeah it's the thing i miss the most about uh like those big box stores like jc penny's yeah Sears back in our day we've still got jc penny you know do we yeah oh, dear god yeah there's there's still i think there's one at the pinnacle it's jc nickel now is it probably inflation oh, and yeah. what's not I was, nah, I was going the opposite way. I was going uh, 
uh, Ray Charles and the Blues Brothers, well, you know, depreciation, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, eh, this store's not really worth a J.C. Penny no, it's, now. it's J.C. Th- Farthing. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I was taking a drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yeah, I like the commodity. Um I like that that one. That short. That was good. That was. I I really uh, did enjoy that. All right, so I'm gonna make a big bold statement. That Adam Strange short was like the best on screen. DC thing I have seen in like three years. <laughs> <laughs> Not counting Zack Snyder's Justice League. Uh, it is great. Have you, have we talked about uh, the King Garrett's Adam Strange? We haven't. No, I haven't gotten a chance to read it yet. I want to desperately, but I haven't. No. All right, then uh, I need you to completely uh, digest what I'm about to tell you. If that's mm-hmm. how you felt about what you just saw, that needs to be the next thing you read. Mm. They make well, was... Adam Strange a war criminal. Yeah, I got that sense. Um, I'll I'll put it to you this way. I had planned on reading uh, King and Garrod's uh, Rorschach next. Scoot this one ahead. Scoot this one ahead. Rorschach okay. is phenomenal as well. That like Everything those two touch... Uh, I don't, yeah. there's, there's platinum. Yeah. Nothing but platinum. That's fair. But that's fair. Uh, if you're more interested in that one, I would say scoot it ahead. Rorschach's not timely. You got all. Yeah. You know. But yeah, Adam Strange. Thought it was fantastic. Uh, loved the hell out of it. It was just really cool. Like, just uh, Zeta Beam. Oh, okay. First of all, like, this is one of the most brutal things I've ever seen with DC. This was like watching Starship Troopers, but with Adam Strange. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, I love that there's just nothing but carnage. And then the Zeta Beam takes him away from his dead wife. He's got to get back to his daughter. He's got to try to figure out when the Zeta Beam is coming. Becomes a minor. Becomes an alcoholic. Of course. I just dug it all. And it's a very small story. It's a very straightforward story. I can't wait to see how it ties into the Tomorrow Verse further down the line. But I always have had like a weird love for Adam Strange. And I'm not uh, disagreeing. I just want to know why. Why do I have always had like a weird love for it? You mean? Yeah. Yeah. What's the affinity? Um, I feel like mostly it is a specific era of pulp sci-fi hmm. it's like rocket packs and oh like rocket man kind of vibe you mean the rocketeer rocketeer yeah good yeah yeah there's sort of yeah well, there's yeah, Elton like, john maybe applicable to this yeah there's a there's a bit of that but it's also just more or less like old you know 40s and 50s pulp magazines where there's you know a dude with a rocket pack and a freaking fin on his head Flying around with a ray gun, you know, the the Ron Thanagarian conflict. It's all very cool. Like crazy old scientist and the, who brought him there. And then there, he's got his daughter that he winds up marrying. Like, I don't know. Like, it's all very uh, just old timey and pulpy. And I just like it. Well, uh, like in a, in a way, <laughs> it reminds me of like those movies that are of the same kind of era. Or notion, or even uh, mm-hmm. the kind, of, kind of same vibe that are like they become mystery science theater kind of movies. Yeah, but like somehow the concept of Adam Strange was actually good enough to not be one of those. Mm-hmm. But because I I do dig his concept, and it's always been well done. But he could easily have been one of those like bullshit movies that <laughs> showed up on that show. Yeah, and. I feel like it's it's very much in the same kind of vein as uh, like Barbarella or something, where it's just like v- clearly much less adult than Barbarella, but it's just like that that cheesy old sci-fi goodness. Yeah. Um. This this had I real love heart. seeing him. 
But. Yeah, this had a lot of heart. This had a lot of violence. Oh yeah, and I was there for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that he likes. He was the guy. He was the savior of everyone at the end. But you know, if my if I had an issue, it would be that like the Zeta Beam <laughs> waited for years and years and then picked him up just then. Yeah, <laughs> but it seemed a little coincidental. But whatever. I'm willing to overlook it. It was it was that a part, cool short. Yeah, that part was like, yeah, and you knew it was a day six mocking a kind of thing. But um, I dug it though, I, I, especially in the context of where that left us, where you just have no idea where that leaves us with the rest of his story. Like at least that we might get something else later. I, I think I would be more annoyed if I just never knew it was happening with him ever again in the in that universe. <clears throat> yeah, that would really annoy me. That would make me livid. In that case, I think I would prefer the scene ended with him just kicking that like whiskey bottle. <laughs> I mean, genuinely, just him being like, "Well, it's me and a dead planet now. I guess I'll just drink until this either happens or doesn't." I get. Yeah, yeah. By the way, do you have that Adam Strange by Tom King? Uh, yeah, I have the issues, I believe. Okay. Would you like to farther? Yeah, I might need to do that. <laughs> can do, can do. We'll arrange that. Do you have all of the human target? Is that all out yet? <laughs> I have that as well. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Although I've only read the first two of human target. I just have it mm-hmm. housed as the next thing I'm going to read when I get back to uh, being able to do like a series like that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think that's it. That's all. I think. I think that's all I got. What did? You, how did you feel? Did you? Are you good? Or do you want to talk more? Yeah. No. We're good. We're good. All right. Did I adequately explain why I like Adam Strange? <laughs> I think. I don't know. All right. Was that a worry you had? It just occurred to me. I feel like you got it across pretty well. Yeah. No. I. It just occurred to me suddenly that I was like, oh shit. Did we talk about that? Yeah. He's- all right. Super cool. He's got a retro fill that you like, and yeah, a, a storyline that apparently has way more explanation or uh, ability to be explored than previous generations have thought. Because damn, these last few things have been fire. Yeah, but you know, I even like the '90s version. Like it was weird because like I love like the old timey version where it just looks like the 1950s. Uh, True, but then like. In the 90s or early 2000s, they did a new a miniseries. And it was like everything I loved about that era. Where it was just like big clunky armor. Like ridiculous, you know, like sub anime style kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I, that was, I just loved that in a completely different way. And uh, so, yeah, I like Adam Strange. I actually loved his, his character in Krypton as well. Yeah, I did. I like seeing that actor show up on Reacher. Yeah. Which had but I mean, it, so like I don't know that it would have been popular. It might have been a cool world situation, but I would have loved to to see like Brad Pitt do Adam Strange back in the nineties. <sighs> I feel like it was begging to be made by Tim Burton too. Because he loves that old retro shit. Like not not like Nightmare Before Christmas style. I, I I feel like the cheekbones are what have drawn you to this conclusion, and I don't disagree with you. What the Brad Pitt thing? Yeah, uh, just ma- mainly mainly just the guy from Krypton looked like Brad Pitt to me. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we could have done something else. I wouldn't be mad at that. We can do something else. I don't know. True, and you know, also to be fair, um, it's like that slim, athletic type. So you know, cool. Yeah, that works. I'm not mad at the casting there. No, yeah. I would have done it. That would that would almost be too much leash to give Tim Burton though to do something like Adam Strange. <laughs> uh huh. Oh. oh, God! You know who should do an Adam Strange movie? Luke Besson. Don't know. Him. Fifth Element. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like that's all you need. Like really, change my but mood. Also, in two sentences or two statements. Two yeah, blurts, really. Fi- uh, Leon, the professional, yes. <laughs> uh, fifth element, Lucy, Valerian. He'd be fine. Yeah. He's got this. Like, no worries. Luke Bison, come do our Adam Strange movie. 
<laughs> I need it. Yeah. Maybe that. I, I need could, his version. I could maybe drum up some others. The Wachowskis occurred to me immediately as mm. a real possibility there. Yeah. I mean, think I about... I think I'm done with them. Think about, like, if you saw <laughs> Resurrection, but that last act was, uh, you know, basically a couple people with a gun before the Zeta Ray came up and they were defending themselves from a bunch of winged people. Mm-hmm. It would have been great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was great. Literally people diving. You know? I know. I know. It would have worked. I, I'm just saying, if I went, if I went and redid that scene, it would probably... <laughs> It would probably play. Wait, what were you changing? I was actually just thinking about the scene. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly that scene. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's all. Yeah. 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 I'm down for that. I think uh I think Mr. Gunn has his work cut out for him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's it. Uh thank you for listening. And we'll be back uh next week with some news, some happenings, some goings ons. There is. And spoiler alert, it's contentious as it often is. <laughs> but we're uh-huh. going to do our best to be calm about it and, um, you know, <clears throat> not drive to whatever city and light something on fire. Well, well as we've always be, done. Easy to be calm when you don't give a fuck. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, well, uh, I'm, I get quite aggravated with people online. Mm. But you know what? Uh, I'll try to keep my cool. The CW president's a liar. That's all I'll say. Um, <laughs> that's all I'll say. I don't know that for sure. You're just going to but... come out all violent like that. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, no. I mean, I'm sure it was right, Warner save Brothers. The save the violence. Save the violence. Save the violence. We'll talk about we'll next We'll address week. it another time. <laughs> It couldn't have been next star because they were only canceling everything. Right. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's so hard not to say stuff. Don't make me edit this episode. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to. <laughs> Until next time, keep some DC on your screen. Love you. Hey, thanks for listening to DC on Screen. Our theme song is by Jason Goss and Michael Shackelford of Galactic Engineers. The incidental music is by Michael Shackelford and Kevin McLeod. You can rate the show on Spotify or rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Doing that really well, helps I push our show to new I listeners, record, so your help so. would be much appreciated. You can also contact the show at DC on Screen on Twitter, Instagram, Five, and Facebook, or four, email us at DC on Screen at gmail.com. To become a patron and get ad-free episodes and exclusive content, go to patreon.com slash DC on screen. Your reviews and feedback may end up on a future episode of DC on screen. (laughs) DC on screen is a production of maladjusted.tv in association with Stranded Panda. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever damn platform you use.